morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're glad to have each and every one of you on this last Sunday of 2021. We gather together today as God's wonderful people to lift up the name of Jesus Christ, that name that's above all names. We gather together to fellowship one with another, to reach out to one another, to pray for one another, to make that difference in one another's lives. We gather this morning to worship Jesus Christ. Hymn number 246, Joy to the World. This morning as we go to the Lord in prayer, we want to remember all those that are sick, those that are shut in, those in the nursing home. We ask the Lord to be with each and every one of them and to touch them in a mighty way to heal their bodies. And we give the Lord the praise and the glory. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before your throne of grace this morning, Heavenly Father, we Thank you for your love and your concern for each and every one of your precious children. Thank you for walking with us day by day, encircling us with your loving arms and giving us that assurance of life, life abundantly, and that assurance of eternal life. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your mercy and for your grace for what you did for us on Calvary's cross as you sent your son Jesus Christ to die and shed his blood that our sins might be forgiven, that we might have that life and that we might have it so abundantly. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your son Jesus Christ who comes to give us hope for each day, to give us that life and to give us that assurance of eternal life. Heavenly Father, we pray for your precious Holy Spirit to come and live and dwell in each and every one of our hearts, that your Holy Spirit might guide us and direct us in all the ways that you would have us to go. Heavenly Father, that we might be drawn closer to you and closer to one another, and that we might make a difference in the world around about us. 
Heavenly Father, we pray for all those that are sick, all those that are in need of your touch this morning, those in the nursing home, those in the hospital. Lord, you know each and every one of them. Lord, we just ask for your touch to be upon them in a mighty way. Heavenly Father, for those that are bereaved, we ask that you continue to encircle each and every one of them and hold them close during these days. Heavenly Father, we thank you for each and every one of these precious lives that are gathered here today. Heavenly Father, you know each and every one of our hearts. Lord, you know what each and every one of us are going through. Lord, we just ask for that touch to be upon each and every one of us as you meet our needs today. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for the prayer that Jesus prayed on many occasions. He taught his disciples to pray, and we pray this morning as your children. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hymn number 254, we will sing the verses and do the chorus on the last verse. response to reading is found on page 828. We're reading today from Psalm 105. <clears throat> oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call on God's name. Make known God's deed among the people. Glory in God's holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Remember the wonderful works God has done, the miracles and judgment God has uttered. (coughs) 
The Lord is our God whose judgments are in all the earth. The covenant made with Abraham, his promise sworn to Isaac and confirmed to Jacob as a statue, to Israel as an everlasting covenant, saying, By way of announcements, I would just like to say that Marlene and I thank each and every one of you for what you have done for us during the Christmas season, and we appreciate everything that you continue to do. I appreciate you reaching out to the memorial home and making a difference in the lives of those people there. I appreciate you reaching out to the food bank and making a difference in those that are in need of food during these days. I appreciate all that you continue to do. What a privilege it is to be able to serve you and to continue to be with you as a family as we continue to reach out to make that difference as God's wonderful people, as we reach out to a community that's in need. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and for this opportunity to serve you. Thank you for the greatest gift of all. And Heavenly Father, we're so thankful that we can return unto you of that which you have given unto us. Heavenly Father, bless each and every gift that's been given this day. And Heavenly Father, may those gifts be used for the uplifting of your kingdom. Heavenly Father, we ask now that you might bless each and every one that continues to give to make that difference in the life of the church. Heavenly Father, we ask that you might bless them a hundredfold today. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand for the doxology?
In the second chapter of the Gospel of Luke, beginning with verse 41, now Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they supposed him to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinfolks and their acquaintances. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him was astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I sought thee sorrowly. And he said unto them, How is it that you follow me? Will you not know that I must be about my father's business? And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for the scripture and the message that you have given unto me this day as I break the bread of life unto your wonderful people. Heavenly Father, may every word that flow from my lips be pleasing unto you. And Heavenly Father, these are your precious children who have come this morning to hear the bread of life. May their hearts and meditation thereof be pleasing unto you. Heavenly Father, we ask that you might anoint every word that is spoken and every word that is received. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Our subject this morning is where is Jesus? Yesterday, we celebrated the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. A baby being born in a manger of Bethlehem, leaving the portals of glory, coming down to a little manger in Bethlehem, that his name might be called Emmanuel, which means that God has come to be with us. And there in the manger, we learn of God's love, God's mercy, God's compassion, God's forgiveness, everything that we need to know about God, we find it in that little babe in a manger in Bethlehem. And we see the angels coming to the shepherds in the field. The shepherds were looked down upon, and yet the angels appeared unto them first to tell them, about the birth of Christ. And the shepherds came to that little manger and they bowed down and they worshiped. And then the wise men came from afar. They brought the gold and mirth and frankincense and they bowed down 
and they worship the baby Jesus. And then the word came to Joseph that Herod was trying to kill the baby Jesus. Take him and his mother into Egypt and wait there. And so Joseph took Mary and Joseph to Egypt, and there they waited until the death of Herod, and then they returned to Nazareth. Now, there are many stories about Jesus and his childhood, but there is only one story that made it into the Bible. Luke's gospel, and Luke, being a historian, thought that this story needed to be in the Scriptures. For it tells us how devoted that Joseph and Mary was in their religious faith. Because if you live more than 20 miles away from Jerusalem, you did not have to make the journey to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. But the scripture says that Mary and Joseph made that journey every year. The women was not required to make that journey. Yet they were willing to travel that 80 miles from Nazareth to Jerusalem every year for the feast of the Passover. Now Jesus was 12 years old. The next year he would become a young man according to the Jewish law. And so they made that journey to Jerusalem. And since it was a long journey and since it was a dangerous journey, they went with their relatives and their acquaintance and the people from around Nazareth and they made that trip down to Jerusalem. And they went for the feast of the Passover. And when the feast of the Passover was over, Mary and Joseph and the different ones that had traveled with them made that journey back towards Nazareth. And they went a day's journey. And then they recognized, where is Jesus? And they began to look for him among the kinfolks and acquaintances. And yet they could not find him. And so they turned around and they made that day's journey back to Jerusalem. It took them three days all together to find Jesus. And they found him there in the temple, sitting among the doctors, asking questions and answering questions. They were astonished at his knowledge. And then when Mary and Joseph found Jesus there in the temple, they asked him, Son, why did you do this? Why did you stay behind? Didn't you know that we would be concerned about you? But Mom, don't you know that I have to be about my father's business? And they did not understand. And 30 years later, or when Jesus was 30, they still did not completely understand who he was and what he had to be about. The scripture said that Jesus went back to Nazareth with Mary and Joseph. And he was subject unto them, and he grew in strength and wisdom. Now, folks, there are certain events in our lives that we can go back and we can remember where we were, 
we can remember exactly how it was. I can remember when John F. Kennedy was shot. I was in the 11th grade in the gym class, getting ready to take a shower to go to the next class. When it came over the loudspeaker that President Kennedy had been shot. And a short time later, we found out that he had died. I can see it as if though it was yesterday. And I can remember when the Challenger blew up and the seven folks lost their lives. I just arrived at Coastal Carolina for the morning class. Walked into the student lounge and the television was on and a few people was watching it. And I stopped long enough to watch the, the rocket take off. And then it exploded and seven lives were gone, including a school teacher. I can remember it and see it just as it was yesterday. I know that there are different events in each and every one of your lives that you too can look back and remember exactly how it was and when it was. I believe that Mary and Joseph never forgot about that event that took place in Jerusalem when Jesus stayed behind when they made their way towards Nazareth, when they had gone a day's journey. You know, sometimes we just don't know what children's gonna do. And sometimes when it comes to children, sometimes we don't know where to laugh or where to cry. A teacher over the kindergarten class was helping a young boy get his boots on. And she struggled to help to try to get his boots up and get them on. And by the time she got the boots on, she was give out. And the little boy looked up at her and said, Teacher, they're on the wrong feet. And so there she goes and she pulls them out again. This time she puts them on the right foot left foot, gets them on, and the little boy looks at her and says, Teacher, these are not my boots. The teacher pulls them off, and she says, Whose boots are they? She said, They're my brother's boots, but my mama told me to wear them to school today. And so there she goes, and she puts them back on again. She gets them on, and she says, Now, where are your mittens? He said, oh, I stuck them down in my boots. You know, sometimes you just don't know what children don't do. And that's how it was with Jesus. Mary and Joseph had no idea that Jesus was going to stay behind there in Jerusalem. But they went a day's journey before they recognized that he was not with them. Folks, how many of us remember how it was before Jesus Christ became Lord of our lives? Do we remember we were without hope? We were walking in darkness? We didn't know what the next day would bring? We were completely lost. But then the Holy Spirit knocked on our heart's door and Jesus Christ became the Lord of our lives. And we experienced the love of God. We experienced hope. The Holy Spirit came to live and dwell in our hearts. And that Holy Spirit would begin to guide us and direct us and to keep us in the right path. And when we would go astray, the Holy Spirit would remind us that we're headed in the wrong direction and the Holy Spirit would help pull us back. 
Folks, this morning, we need to make sure that we never go a day's journey without Jesus. Folks, because we don't know what the day will bring. This could be our last day on this earth. And so it's so important for us this morning to never go a day's journey without Jesus living in our hearts and the Holy Spirit guiding us in that way so that we can know that we will spend all of eternity with him. And the scripture said that they went that day's journey without him and then they supposed him to be among the kinfolks and the relatives and acquaintances. Folks, when it comes to our spouse, we pretty well know how one another feels about the Lord. But what about our children when they leave home and they go out on their own? Do we suppose that Jesus is with them? What about those that we go to school with? Do we suppose that Jesus lives in their hearts? What about our relatives and all our kin folks? Do we just assume that Jesus lives within their hearts? Folks, it's so such serious business when it comes to Jesus Christ living and dwelling in our hearts and making that difference in our lives. That folks, we can't just assume that Jesus Christ is among our children or our acquaintances or those we work with or those we go to school with. It's so important that we share God's love, the hope that God gives us. In the midst of the darkness, there is that light. There is the joy of Christ. And there's that peace that passes all understanding. It's so important for us to share with those that we love so that if the trump was to sound, they would not be left out. This morning, don't assume that those you love know Jesus. They said they went three days, one day back, and two days hunting Jesus, and they found him in the temple. This morning, where two or three are gathered in his name, Jesus will be with us. And any time that we call out to Jesus, he will be with us. The Holy Spirit will always speak what God wants us to know. And so it's important for us to allow that Holy Spirit to live and dwell in our hearts so that we can have that open path to God. The scripture said that Jesus was obedient and he went back to Nazareth with Mary and Joseph. Folks, this morning it's important for us to be obedient to God. To listen to the Holy Spirit, for the Holy Spirit will only tell us what God wants us to know. And so it's important for us this morning to listen, to pray, so that we might do God's will that we might make a difference in the world around about us. And Jesus grew in wisdom and strength. And folks, if you will give your heart to the Lord and allow the Holy Spirit to dwell with you, you too will grow in wisdom and strength. God will send you where you need to go 
and God will reveal unto you what you need to know so that you can make that difference. This morning, don't go a day's journey without Jesus. Don't assume that he's among the kinfolk and relatives. Know that the Lord is with us wherever we are. For he has promised us he will never leave us nor forsake us. He would be with us even unto the end. Why don't we go tell it on the mountain? 251. First and last verse as we sing together. Heavenly Father, help us this day to be all that you would have us to be. Heavenly Father, may your spirit live in each and every one of our hearts. May your spirit guide us and direct us in all those ways that you would have us to go as we reach out to make that difference to a world that is hurting, to a world that is in darkness. Heavenly Father, help us to be that light in the midst of that darkness. Heavenly Father, we ask it all in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.